This is Apollo Control, 64 hours, 38 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 12, now 178,717 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity, 2,356 feet per second. We have approximately two and a half minutes of accumulated tape of some minor conversations that have taken place in the last uh, half hour or so, including a uh, description by Conrad of uh, some uh, locations and landmarks in Australia, which he was able to see through the uh, optics from the spacecraft. We listen to that tape now. Houston, Apollo 12. 12, Houston, go. Hello, Houston 12. Apollo 12, Houston, go. Roger, uh, are you going to let us know before we go to bed tonight whether we're going to do MCC 4 or not? I think we probably can, Pete. Uh, right now it uh, doesn't look too much like we're going to do one. Okay, uh, we'll uh, stand by. I just want to know whether uh, we were going to know before we went to bed or not. Uh, Pete, I think we can tell you before you hit the sack. Okay, very good. Houston 12. 12, Houston, go. Amazing how well you can see when you're looking at something. You recognize I uh, got the binocular here and I'm looking at Australia and I can see 80 Mile Beach and, or the area that that's in and the area that uh, Shark's Mouth Bay just south of Carnarvon's in. Very clear over in that part of the Australia right now. Roger, Pete. This is Apollo Control. And that completes the playback of uh, accumulated tape. At 64 hours, 40 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 66 hours, 38 minutes, ground elapsed time. Had very little communications with the spacecraft Apollo 12 during the last hour. About 17 seconds of accumulated tape and one brief exchange with the crew when they were advised to uh, shut down charging battery B. We'll play back that, all of that 17 seconds right now. Apollo 12, Houston. Roger, battery B is all chuck full of electrons now and you can terminate the charge. Roger, thank you. And that uh, is a uh, sum total of words exchanged with mission control during the last hour. According to the flight plan, the crew should be at this time in their eat period and uh, going into their pre-sleep checklist. And at 68 hours, ground elapsed time, uh, about an hour and a half from now, hour and 20 minutes, they're scheduled to begin a eight-hour rest period. Flight Dynamics Officer Dave Reed advised the uh, Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth in the last few minutes that uh, right now it still looks as though mid-course number four will be unnecessary. But uh, as they get additional tracking following the wastewater dump, which apparently perturbed the trajectory somewhat, uh, for another several hours, then they'll have a better handle on whether or not there will be a, a need for the mid-course number four maneuver. The uh, space digitals with the uh, distance and velocity information is not being generated at this time and at 
66 hours, 40 minutes, ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 67 hours, 8 minutes, ground elapsed time. 182,011 nautical miles out from, ta from uh, Earth. Uh, 2,264 feet per second in velocity. We have uh, some 41 seconds of tape to play back at this time. Apollo 12, Houston. Roger, 12. Uh, at this time, it looks like uh, there'll be no need to schedule a mid-course for next eight hours or so if uh, we have no major changes in the trajectory due to dumps or anything like that, it probably will be uh, a sure no mid-course mid course for. Okay, it looks like we'll have any dumps on the regular uh, here, it's up to we have to have no wastewater. Again, yeah, with that, it looks like you're going to give us another 10 hours sleep tonight, huh? Hey, firm. Roger, Pete. Uh, it looks like your EKG uh, indication has gone sour down here. Would you uh, check your blue lead on uh, your your system there when you get a chance? It worked. He was exercised. He may have pulled it loose. Okay. How's it look now, Houston? Loud and clear, Pete. Say again, Jerry? Uh, we're reading you loud and clear now, Pete. Okay, I just didn't reinstall it correctly. You are now medically acceptable again. You made your finally found his heart. This is Apollo Control. That last exchange uh, regarding the commander's biomedical harness and reconnecting it so that flight surgeon John Ziegelschmidt could uh, observe the commander's heart rate was... Uh, a live transmission. We'll leave the circuit up for a few moments longer in case conversation resumes. This is Apollo Control. The line is getting quite noisy now as the spacecraft uh, rotating three revolutions per hour uh, loses lock with the ground from the high gain antenna. At 67 hours, 12 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 67 hours, 42 minutes, ground elapsed time. The uh, spacecraft communicator, Jerry Carr, is talking to the spacecraft now. Uh, let's uh, play back the tape and eventually catch up live. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, you about ready to give us an EMOD dump? Okay, coming at you. I've got your uh, RCS consumables if you're ready to copy. Okay, Jared, go ahead. Roger, uh, to GET 67 plus zero zero. RCS total is 80.0, Alpha 77.2, Bravo 83.1, Charlie 77.5, Delta 82.2, over. Houston, or were you calling? Uh, Apollo 12, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston, how do you read? Over. Uh, Roger, loud clear, Jerry, on me. Okay, Dick, uh, we lost your EMOD dump about halfway through. Would you uh, try it again? Uh, Houston 12. Apollo 12, Houston, how do you read? 
Uh, Apollo 12, Apollo 12, this is Houston. How do you read? All right, you're not there. I think in the middle of switching over. Are you ready for my onboard readout? Uh, affirmative, Dick, and we'll need another EMOD dump from you, too. Battery Charlie 37.0, Pyro Alpha 37.1, Pyro Bravo 37.1, Delta P plus 0.25. medication, right? Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, uh, would you verify that you changed uh, canister number six out? We sure did. Okay, and uh, ask Dick to give us a, a quick call. Uh, his last downlink uh, was pretty rough, and we suspect maybe it was mic position. Otherwise, we might have comm problems. Uh, he's not on the comm right now. Okay, you're sounding pretty good. It must have been his mic, and uh, we've copied your EMOD dump, and so that about wraps it up. Okay, uh, we're uh, getting ready to uh, sack out here, and uh, we've still got to chlorinate the water yet. We're still cleaning up some dinner a little bit. Uh, do you want us to wear biomed tonight? We prefer not to the two that are sleeping under uh, the couches uh, so that it doesn't interfere with our sleeping bags. Uh, Pete, doctor says uh, we could get along without it tonight, but they definitely want it uh, tomorrow night. Okay, uh, they go make that standard procedure. They had to rig these sleeping bags so that you could get in there without uh, having to leave it half open. Roger, Pete. Uh, the the uh, biomed they need tomorrow night is just on you and Al. Yeah, we're the two that are sleeping in the sleeping bags under the couch. Ain't that nice. See you in the morning, Pete. This is Apollo Control. With that final tuck-in message by spacecraft communicator Jerry Carr, apparently uh, communications have ceased for the next 10 hours. Spacecraft is now 183,032 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity 2,236 feet per second. Coming up... Uh, at 68 hours and 30 minutes, some uh, 34 minutes from now, will be the uh, crossover from Earth's sphere of influence to the Moon's sphere of influence. And at uh, 67 hours, 56 minutes, around elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 69 hours, 19 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 12, presently uh, 32,099 nautical miles from the moon, traveling at a velocity relative to the moon of 3,542 feet per second. After the changeover in reference from uh, Earth to moon numbers, the display here in Mission Control now... Uh, show moon distances and moon relative velocities. We have a little over a minute of accumulated tape uh, where spacecraft communicator Jerry Carr discussed with uh, 
Dick and Gordon some uh, minor adjustments to the passive thermal control mode. Also uh, setting up the communication system for the sleep. And finally, uh, what is probably the uh, final conversation for the next 10 hours or so. We'll uh, roll that tape now. Apollo 12, Houston. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Roger, are you about through with your dump up there? Uh, which dump are you talking about here? We're showing uh, O2 flow a little bit high. Looks like your urine uh, nozzle is open and you're dumping. What we're ending up with here is... Uh, oh, okay. TTC is going unstable here. It's beginning to diverge, and we figured we might as well stop it, start it over, and, and get things squared away so there'll be no danger whatsoever of waking you guys up later. Okay, uh, we'll stop the perch now. Hey, Dick, uh, what do you say we reestablish PTC here and get going good so there will be no danger of waking you later? Okay. after the rest period was scheduled to begin. Rest period extended to 10 hours since the mid-course correction number four maneuver is extremely likely not to take place. Meanwhile, the Space Flight Meteorology Group of the Weather Bureau said this morning that weather conditions in the planned landing areas are expected to be satisfactory for the next four days. Ocean areas of concern should have partly cloudy to cloudy skies Winds 10 to 12 knots, seas 3 to 4 feet, temperatures in the Atlantic area in the upper 70s, temperatures in the Pacific area in the mid 80s, isolated showers in the Atlantic and widely scattered showers in the Pacific. And at 69 hours 23 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. 70 hours, 8 minutes, ground elapsed time. Distance now of Apollo 12 from the moon, 30,385 nautical miles. Velocity toward the moon, 3,558 feet per second. To summarize the last 8 hours of Apollo 12 mission, which uh, the green team of flight controllers under flight director Cliff Charlesworth were here in the control center. The crew of Apollo 12 went into the limb for the limb familiarization and housekeeping chores somewhat early. Also the television pass, which uh, had been scheduled to start at 63 hours 30 minutes, actually began at 62 hours 52 minutes, about uh, 38 minutes early. TV ran uh, 56 minutes total time. During the TV pass, the uh, crew of Apollo 12 uh, took the viewer a tour of the lunar module and how they stowed the equipment in various stowage areas. Description of some of the uh, pilot devices, such as the landing point designator. And uh, they closed out with a view of the Earth and the Moon out the command module windows after the hatches and probe and drogue had been restowed in the tunnel. They continued on with the uh, their eat period and the uh, pre-sleep checklist uh, and a negative crew status report. They've taken no medications. 
We're back on the uh, timeline from beginning of the rest period at 68 hours. And since uh, mid-course correction number four likely will not be made, the sleep period will be extended to, for a total of 10 hours to end some 7 hours 48 minutes from now. Apollo 12 entered the moon sphere of influence, or equal gravisphere, at 68 hours 30 minutes 22 seconds. Handover is taking place now. The uh, day shift headed up by Flight Director Jerry Griffin. And here in Mission Control, the uh, new team of flight controllers who likely were asleep at the time of the TV pass are watching a replay on the large Ida 4 television projection screen and on individual monitors. At 70 hours, 11 minutes. Ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 71 hours, 18 minutes. Apollo 12 is 27,953 nautical miles from the moon, traveling at a velocity of 3,582 feet per second. That is lunar referenced. Total weight of the vehicle, 96,117 pounds. Six hours, 41 minutes remaining in this sleep period. Systems performance on Apollo 12 continues normal. This is Mission Control Houston at 71 hours, 18 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 71 hours, 48 minutes. At this time we will replay the tape of the television transmission of early this morning. We'll play the video and audio back to the news center in Building 1 at the Manned Spacecraft Center. We'll utilize the release line for the audio portion of this tape. We'll play the tape now. Roll tape. Uh, TV edit, are you getting sounded? You're in. This is Apollo Control at 72 hours, 44 minutes. All still going well with Apollo 12. Five hours, 15 minutes remaining in the sleep period. Apollo 12 is 24,880 nautical miles from the moon, approaching it at a velocity of 3,618 feet per second. This is Mission Control Houston at 72 hours, 45 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 73 hours, 18 minutes. All still going well with Apollo 12. Four hours and 41 minutes remaining in the sleep period. The only crewman being monitored at the present time is the command module pilot, Dick Gordon. His heart rate is running uh, around 65, which is his normal sleep heart rate, the flight surgeon reports. Apollo 12 is 23,681 nautical miles from the moon, approaching at a velocity of 3,634 feet per second. This is Mission Control Houston at 73 hours, 18 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 74 hours, 18 minutes. Apollo 12 is 21,544 nautical miles away from the moon. Velocity has increased to 3,666 feet per second. The system's performance still normal. We have three hours, 41 minutes remaining before we put in a call to awaken the crew. If they awake on their own before that time, we may expect to hear from them. At 74 hours, 18 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 
75 hours, 18 minutes. Apollo 12 is 19,371 nautical miles from the moon. Velocity 3,705 feet per second. All continuing, continuing to go well. And we're two hours, 41 minutes away from crew wake-up time. This is Mission Control Houston at 75 hours, 18 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 76 hours, 18 minutes. Apollo 12 is approaching the moon at a velocity of 3,751 feet per second. Distance from the moon now, 17,180 nautical miles. We plan to put in a wake-up call to the crew one hour, 41 minutes from this time. This is Mission Control Houston at 76 hours, 18 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 76 hours, 46 minutes. The flight dynamics officer has just informed flight director Jerry Griffin that based on his latest update, uh, he confirms positively now that no mid-course correction number four will be required. The magnitude of that maneuver uh, is only two feet per second. We have been operating for the past number of hours on the assumption that it would not be performed and on that basis had extended the sleep period two hours shortly after it began. We're now one hour 13 minutes from the wake up uh, period of the extended sleep period, 10 hours instead of eight hours. The uh, mid-course correction number four will be incorporated into the lunar orbit insertion maneuver number one and the flight dynamics reports that that burn will be targeted to produce an orbit a lunar orbit of 62 by 169.3 nautical miles his latest update shows that the closest approach to the moon without the lunar orbit insertion burn will be 64.73 nautical miles. That would occur at an elapsed time of 83 hours, 28 minutes, 32 seconds. And the velocity at closest approach would be 8,239 feet per second. At 76 hours, 48 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 77 hours, 18 minutes. Apollo 12 is 14,967 nautical miles from the moon. Its velocity, 3,811 feet per second. We're 41 minutes away from wake-up time. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 77 hours, 45 minutes. 14 minutes remains in this sleep period, but we have indications that the crew is awake. The communications officer reports that he can see through telemetry that they have configured their communications equipment uh, for voice transmission, so we may be hearing from the crew prior to the official wake-up time. Uh, we'll keep this circuit up live for uh, any communication we may get from the crew. Still no word from the crew, and we're five minutes away from the time that we'll initiate a call to them. Apollo 12 is 13,615 nautical miles from the moon. Velocity, 3,856 feet per second.
We don't think the crew heard that because there was an antenna switch right at the start of that bugle call. Uh, if we don't hear from them shortly, we're liable to play it again. You can continue to uh, do PTC during the uh, alignment as you have before. If you want to stop, uh, go to uh, 270. Uh, we'll keep doing PTC to save the gas. Roger. Cycle the fans, could you uh, do that for three minutes this time rather than the uh, usual one so we can get a little better hack on the readouts? Okay, uh, we'll go back and do it for three. We just completed it for two. We'll go back and do it for three. Roger. Uh, Houston 12, can we start battery charge on bat A now? That's affirmative 12. Go ahead. We also have a flight plan update when you're ready. Okay. Okay, we're ready to copy. Okay, first is, uh, seeing as we have no MCC-4, replace the flight plan timeline pages from uh, GET-78 to 82 uh, with the pages you'll find in the back. That's 6-7 uh, to 6-9. And then you'll be picking it up again at page 3-58. At 7800 uh, for no MCC4, delete, stop, PTC, and continue PTC until 80 plus 50. This is optional. Insert, then at 80 plus 50, insert, stop PTC at roll 300. And that's the moon view attitude in roll. And at 79.45, would you perform a rendezvous radar transponder self-test to see if there was uh, any effect on it during launch? Okay, uh, we got uh, 80, 50 stop at 300, 79.45 rendezvous radar transponder self-test. And we have the proper page out of the flight plan. Roger, 12. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. 12, we have your uh, consumables update and some comments on the your P-23s, as well as a uh, alteration to your LOI abort card when you're ready to copy. Okay, let's have the consumables update and all that stuff in that order. Okay, 12, consumables at 
78 plus 15. RCS total, 7 niner, decimal 8. And alpha through delta, in that order, 77.5, 83.4, 77.5. Eighty-one point two, and that gives you about uh, ninety-two below the predicted. H two total seventy-one point two, sixty-nine point nine. H two total seven zero. I'm sorry, that's uh, O two total seven zero point nine or seventy-two point five. Okay. And twelve for the uh, P twenty-three no comm procedures. Uh, Dick, your first sighting exercises showed an excellent performance, although the use of two different horizon locators resulted in quite different apparent horizons. The CMC horizon should be updated to 19 kilometers rather than the 24 for the no comm contingency. Change the uh, erasable address 1351 from its present value of 27340 to 22434. Your second set of P-23s done at about 1530 were excellent. Therefore, use the same locator as in this set. As you expected, the best results are obtained when the star is positioned precisely on the substellar point. When you're using only the center two-thirds of the sextant field of view, and you center the star on the locator. Twelve, do you have uh, those values for the erasable? Okay, we got all it. Say again. Twelve confirmed you have the valuable value for the erasable. Okay, Houston, the address was 1351 and change it to 22434, is that correct? That's correct. Twelve, on the uh, LOI abort card, which you have in the checklist F13-2, your hybrid trajectory is a little different than nominal. Your TLI was slightly off nominal, and your curve for the LI upward is very sensitive to the dispersions in your TLI. Up, uh, hold it, use it to get a good antenna. Okay. amount of static in the background. Let's wait till we clear it up before we proceed. Hello, Houston uh, 12. How do you read? 12, we read you now. Uh, I think the static's dropping off. We're ready to proceed. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. 12, a reminder, uh, would help if you turn the uplink squelch off. Okay, uplink squelch going off. Pete, we uh, have a discussion of the LOI abort card when you're ready. That's in your checklist uh, F13-2. Hang on a second, Houston. Do you have the disc key or the parking angle? Stand by, Dick. Dick, we have them. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, give me the page again in the checklist you were talking about. Okay, Pete, that's your LOI abort card on F13-2. Okay. And uh, we lost you there. All I heard you say something about the trajectory and you faded out. Roger, Pete. Uh, there's a change necessitated here because your hybrid trajectory is different than nominal. Your TLI was slightly off nominal, and the abort curve is very sensitive to dispersions in the TLI. The curve itself should uh, be lowered slightly, and we can give you the coordinates uh, for four different points, and you'll be able to plot that curve yourself. 
Are you ready to copy? Yep, go ahead. Okay, the four points under LOI Delta V sub M. Four zero zero two nine or zero one three five and six zero. Your correspond corresponding abort delta V's two two four zero two zero six five one eight six five one eight zero zero. You copy? Okay. I see we have uh, four points, four hundred, two ninety. One thirty-five and six hundred. And they correspond to two two four zero two zero six five one eight six five and one eight zero zero. Is that correct? Pete, on the one correction on your LOI Delta VM, your last one is sixty. That's six zero rather than six hundred. Okay. Your CSM gimbal angles, which you'll see down in the lower right, are roll 295, pitch 271, yaw 332. Okay, 295, 271, and 332. That's correct. When you uh, plot the curve over, you'll see that your uh, crossover point for mode one occurs at 320, 320 rather than uh, 290 as shown. This would have to be changed in three places. First of all, the table which you have on the card, your first value, first range goes from 290 to 650. That would now go from 320 to 650. On your flight plan, the value 290 is found also on page 3-59er. That would have to be changed to 320. Also, the LMP cue card should be changed, 390 to 320. All of the other limits are unchanged. Okay, we got that. Okay, Pete, that's it. This is Apollo Control at 78 hours, 30 minutes. The change of shift news conference in the Houston News Center will begin at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. 5.30 p.m. for the change of shift news conference. 12, Houston. Go ahead. 12, for your information, uh, after 68.30, a little over 10 hours ago, you started accelerating back towards the moon. And you're now around uh, 12,192 nautical miles out. And your velocity is building. You're presently going uh, 3,911 feet per second. We have some morning news for you. The news of the flight of Apollo 12 continues to maintain worldwide interest. And your television broadcasts are getting priority preference on the local and network newscasts. There's a lot of foreign press here at Houston Press Center and is expected to intensify as you get closer to the lunar landing. Incidentally, there's a new baby boy born to a Baltimore, Maryland mother at the precise time of your liftoff. Her name, or his name is Charles Richard Allen. Wilson is her last name. We have some sports news, and one of the leading items is that... Say again. Say again, 12. First a name uh, turned out to be Charles. Charles Richard Allen. Al, I guess you just snuck in there. We'll be back to uh, you within a minute with the sports news as soon as we get a better antenna. Okay. Well, Houston will continue with the sports news when you're squared away. Okay. 
Okay, go ahead. News reports say that Notre Dame may be about to accept a bowl invitation. This would be for the first time since 1925. If it turns out to be the Cotton Bowl, they will undoubtedly play the winner of the Texas Arkansas Southwest Conference Championship in Fayette on December 6th. Notre Dame has a 7-1-1 record, losing only to Purdue at the beginning of its season. Bobby Roseburg took an early lead and held on Sunday to defeat Jimmy Wright by one stroke in the $50,000 PGA Club Championship at the Roadrunner Golf Resort in Scottsdale. Results of yesterday's uh, ball games, first in the National League, Los Angeles took Philadelphia 23 to 17. It was Dallas over Washington 41 to 28. Minnesota 9, Green Bay 7. Cleveland was over Pittsburgh 24 to 3. San Francisco 20, and Baltimore 17. In a close one, New Orleans 25, New York 24. Atlanta took Chicago 48 to 31. And Detroit over St. Louis 20 to 0. In the American League, Kansas City 34 and New York 16. Oakland 21 and San Diego 16. It's Buffalo over Miami 28 to 3. And Boston took Cincinnati 25 to 14. Houston and Denver played to a 2020 tie. However, in the Houston uh, really made a uh, classic comeback in the last 11 minutes. They put 17 points on when they were down uh, 3 to 20 inside of 11 minutes. First of all, right tackle Domerus scampered into the end zone after picking up a, young, uh, a fumble and running 35 yards. Beathard then got uh, one long bomb to Jerry Levias, which was over 80 yards. And in the last, or at the last three seconds left, Jarella kicked one field goal. Pete Beathard looked pretty good, in the, especially in the last quarter, and especially on that one last long bomb. He laid it right into the hands of Levias. And Pete, one last, uh, one last item. Al Unser won the Phoenix 200 race. Roger, thank you. Uh, Apollo 12's present distance from the moon at 78 hours 48 minutes is 11,546 nautical miles. Velocity, 3,940 feet per second. Flight Director Glenn Lunny and his black team is in the process of taking over from Flight Director Jerry Griffin and the gold team. The Capcom on the oncoming shift will be astronaut Paul White's. This is Apollo Control. At the present time, the crew is scheduled to be eating breakfast. We don't anticipate a great deal of conversation from them. The change of shift press conference is scheduled to begin shortly in the Houston News Center. We will be taping any conversation from Mission Control with the crew during the press conference, playing it back immediately following. At 79 hours, two minutes into the flight, Apollo 12 is... Uh, at an altitude of 11,058 nautical miles from the moon, traveling at a speed of 3,964 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 79 hours, 25 minutes. During the change of shift briefing, uh, we had one brief conversation with the spacecraft. Uh, Commander Pete Conrad uh, came on to describe the moon for us. The spacecraft at the present time is about uh, 10,113 nautical miles from the moon, traveling at a speed of 4,015 feet per second. We'll play back that uh, tape for you and then continue to stand by live. Hello, 12 Houston. We have a state vector and a clock update for you. If you'll give us two and accept, please. Roger, roger. Two and accept. Boy, that bird looks big today, Houston. They 
length about the size of a uh, baseball held at arm's length. And you can see all the mountains and craters. It's really a beautiful sight. We're starting to move on the far side of the sun from it, so we only see about an eighth of it. But that eighth of it is really stark. You can see particularly up near the pole on the limb, you can start to see that it's not a nice smooth ball anymore. It's got some uh, little ridges and bumps that would be mountains or craters if you could see them uh, right head on. It's a beautiful sight. Buzz, well, understand, Phil. That's a good sign if it's getting to be look bigger. On the other hand, the earth. Uh, on the other hand, the earth looks like a, about the size of a quarter held at arm's length, which is pretty small. But uh, 12 Houston, we're waiting to get high bid rate before we uh, send up that load. The reason for the delay. Okay. Well, Houston, computer's yours. Roger. Houston, 12. Go, 12. Roger, uh, you want to watch this run to the radar uh, transponder self-test? We're about ready to do that anytime you are. Okay, stand by. 12 Houston, there's nothing meaningful we can monitor on that, Pete. Just uh, go ahead with it. Okay, it's in work. Uh, Houston, 12. Go, 12. Best we can determine it's a good transponder. Uh, system test in uh, A gave us 4.2. Uh, system test B gave us 2.0. Uh, with it in operate on B, it gave us zero, and system test indicator in C, unlock gave us 0 0.4. Roger, right, copy 12, understand. Thank you. Anything else you need? Uh, if you're finished eating, I got a Parasynthian Plus 2 abort pad for you. Okay, uh, Al is uh, ready to copy. Okay, Parasynthian plus two. That's PS, G and N. Six, two, four, nine, or one. Plus, zero, nine, or zero. Minus, zero, one, seven. Zero, eight, five. Two, five. One, seven, nine, or two. Plus one six zero one zero plus one five six one nine er minus three four nine er eight one. The roll angle is NA, it's unconstrained. The pitch angle is zero three one. The remainder of the pad is NA. And that's no knowledge, and of course would be a Doc Burn. Over. Okay, Houston, that's uh, Persephian plus two, SPS G and N, six two four nine one, plus zero nine zero, minus zero one seven, zero eight five, two five, one seven nine two, plus one six zero one zero, plus one five. Six one nine minus three four nine eight one NA zero three one the rest of the pads in A no wallage Doc Burn. That's Charlie L. Apollo twelve Houston. I have some checklist changes and updates for you. If you want to break out your LEM contingency checklist and the LEM timeline book, please. Okay. I'll okay. be with you in just a second. They're buried up here in I-3. We're gone after. Okay. Okay, I got the timeline out. Let's uh, go with those changes first, please. 
Okay, on the LAM timeline book, page six. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's uh, touchdown plus three to through T2 abort. Uh, at the top left-hand part on about the eighth or ninth step down, there's a descent vent fire. You got that? Yep. Okay, insert after that. If the she pressure drops 15 PSI, then close both vents. We got it. Okay, and uh, Spence said he briefed you on before launch. Uh, then we vent the oxidizer per the checklist and vent the fuel at 8 PSI. Right, I am. We got him. Okay, now we go to the contingency book. We don't have that book aboard. It's in the limb right now, but we'll take a note on a flight plan and move it over there. Okay, uh, page Delta slash Alpha 6, step 1. After uh, the step which says guidance control to pings, add on the commander's TTCA throttle min. The reason for that is if the engine is armed longer than two minutes, as it may be when you run through the rest of this check, if it's armed for longer than two minutes without the TTCA and throttle and 10%, you may damage the throttle actuator. I understand. Okay, on page DA7. After step one, we want you to set the lunar centered bit. You do that with a verb, 2-5, noun, 0-7, enter, 1-0-4, enter, 0-6, enter, 1, enter, over. Roger, that's verb 25, down 07, enter, 104, enter. Zero six zero 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 enter one enter. That's firm, Al. That's interesting if we have to set it then, and we never have to set it during normal operations. Okay, let me see if I can get an answer for you on that. Also, uh, the first one you sent up, we made the change in our activation checklist, a correction lunar surface checklist, first page reflect also the new uh, vent pressures. Roger. Oh, 12 Houston, uh, the reason for this, Al, is that in the normal activation sequence, that that setting the lunar centered bit that you asked about, in the normal activation sequence, the ground uplinks the vector. And uh, in the other stuff that they send up with that vector, they set this lunar centered bit. However, the page we're talking about is uh, a, the contingency for a dock dips burn. That vector is not set up, sent up, and you will have to set this bit on board. Roger, understand now. This is Apollo Control at uh, 80 hours, 3 minutes. Apollo 12 is uh, 8,642 nautical miles from the moon, traveling at a speed of 4,114 feet per second. The data transmitted to the ground from the Apollo 12 crew following the rendezvous radar transponder self-test indicated that uh, there is no problem with that piece of equipment on the uh, command module. The crew at the present time is running through some of the lunar orbit insertion checklists and checks for the maneuver scheduled to occur at some 83 hours 25 minutes into the mission. We have a TV transmission scheduled at uh, 81 hours 30 minutes, which would be about 7.52 p.m. Central Standard Time.